Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. George Michael's Last Christmas is a festive playlist must, but for loved ones it's a painful reminder of his untimely death. The megastar passed away on Christmas Day 2016 and the song is at number three in the charts as fans honoured his legacy. Longtime friend Andros Gregory says that hearing the track still reduces him to tears. In a morphing interview he says, December is a write-off, stirring memories of his pal's death. The singer would be alive if, it, if his first big love, Alselmo Flipper, had not died. A cemetery plaque has finally been given the star respect he deserves. George Wilde's tours of sex, drugs, rock and roll included sleeping with a supermodel. Andros, 59, was a childhood friend of George and the pair were so close they called each other cousins. Their family spent Christmases and holidays together and Andros toured with George for more than a decade. While still mourning his friend, Andros was delighted to see George's name now engraved at the family grave in Highgate Cemetery, North London. A simple marred slab was recently added. Andros says, I went to see George's grave and finally I was happy to see a plaque along with his mum and sister. It was very emotional because it had made it real. I'm very happy that this has happened. It took so long. For, for a while now I have felt that he had been forgotten. He was so important as a singer and songwriter. So many pop stars followed him. He was a leader, but it felt it felt like that he hasn't been recognised. Now, to have the stone finally engraved, it feels like something. Andrus marked the anniversary of his beloved friend's death by playing his hits on London Calling Radio FM. He says, This time of year is always incredibly hard for me. December is a write-off. But yesterday I did a radio show and I played all of his hits. Hearing last Christmas is painful, but I wanted to remember him and reach out to his fans to show that he isn't forgotten. Music producer Andros appeared in the BBC Two documentary Freddie Mercury, The Final Act, to mark the 30th anniversary of his death. It covers the final concert with Queen before Freddie died in 1991 due to complication from AIDS. Andros believes if George's Brazilian boyfriend, Alselmo Filippa, had not been contracted the disease, the singer would still be alive. George's song, Jesus to a Child, was a tribute to Al Salmo, a dress designer who was 33 when he died in 1993, a year into their relationship. Andrew says, George was the love of his life, and if he hadn't died, I think George would still be here. After Al Salmo, he didn't find a real love. He had a lot of sex and met lots of people, but he never found what he had in Al Salmo. I saw how happy they were. I think he was quite lost after Al Salmo died, and it hit him hard. George was godfather to Andros' son, James Kennedy, 28, a US reality TV star. Andros has a huge collection of pictures chronicling his time with George and shares some with the Mirror readers today. He also has hundreds of hours of footage and is in talks to make a film about their time together. He continues, The footage is amazing and there's loads of it. I want to make a docufilm and bring that time alive. There are so many great memories. On one occasion was a holiday to St. Bart's in 1992 with George and Anselmo. Andros recalls, we were on top of the world at that point. We had champagne for breakfast. Alselmo loved Don Pirion and we partied for 48 hours. I loved Souffle and George had the salmon all the time. We used to do a lot of, of ecstasy. We'd have an ecstasy pill for breakfast and we would go all day and all night. We went to this little club in the mountains, the only one there, and then drove back to the house. But we stopped in the middle of the road for hours because we were so high. If we got bored, we would just like take a seaplane to another island. Despite the emergence of AIDS, Andros says that there was no shortage of sex, drugs and rock and roll. He says, There was a lot of sex in clubs in New York and London, cloak rooms and stuff. It was fun and I don't regret a second of it. I was the luckiest man in pop because I was with George and George was gay and there, was, there were queues and queues of models. There were A-list models, A-list pop stars. He remembered George sleeping with a supermodel during one video shoot saying, Sometimes George got with women too. In the early days he was bisexual. I can't name her, but he slept with the top model in the world. George was found dead, aged 53, at his home in Goring on Thames, Oxham. Tragically, sister Melanie died three years later to the day, aged 59. Her grave lies on this other side of her mum's, Leslie's and Highgate Cemetery, and Andros believes bad luck has struck once more after the recent death of one of his and George's close friends. He adds, We've got the curse again. One of my exes, who I met with George and who George initially asked out, died. I don't want to name her out of respect, but the family, but she was one of George's greatest friends and he left money to her in his will. It's just been so sad. George, born Georgios Karakos Panayotou, shot to fame in the 1980s with Andrew Ridley in Wham. He went solo and sold more than 100 million albums worldwide. Four of his five albums went to number one, as did seven singles, including 1984's Careless Whisper, recorded during the time with Wham. 
He remains in huge demand on likes of Spotify and latest accounts show his main music companies made £8 million in 2019, four times as much as the year he died. George had a long-term relationship with American art dealer Kenny Gross and lived with hairstylist Fuzzy Fawaz at the time of his death. He left most of his £97.6 million pounds estate to his sisters. Despite their closeness, George and Andros had fallen out in the decade before the star's death and Andros has always regretted not properly healing the rift. That hurts the most that I didn't get to say goodbye, he says. Now he is hoping George's family and the estate will give their blessings to his upcoming projects. He adds, For the Freddie Mercury document, George's family initially didn't want anything to do with it, but then they watched it and loved it. I hope they will be on board with my film, as it's going to be special and I want the world to see it. Thanks for listening. For more celebrity news, please like, comment and subscribe.